Howdy, howdy, howdy. January 4th, right here at Base Camp. I'm calling this Base Camp today, and I'm going to tell you why uh, in a minute. This is the resistance. It's getting serious, and it's exciting. It's a serious topic, though. And uh, this is Base Camp right here. This is this episode of Randy's RV Bible Study is called The Resistance. So John, let's jump in where I was at before. Where I was at was uh, we were, we was, we was in uh, Luke 4, if you're with me, and um, Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. We talked about the wilderness in the previous episode, and that's uh, training day. We talked about that. So all of us, including our Lord and Savior, have been in the wilderness and being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days, he ate nothing. He didn't eat anything for 40 days. And afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. That's a, a duh, no brainer. And the devil said to him, now the devil comes. If you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him up high on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Interesting. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this is delivered to me, and I will give him whenever I wish. You know, the devil's not always a liar. He packs in some truth with lies. He has been given uh, all of the kingdoms. But uh, by Jesus, he gave him to Jesus. He's like an Indian giver. So, therefore, if you worship me, I will, it'll be yours. And Jesus answered him and says, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only shall you serve get behind me satan the resistance jesus has the resistance we're going to talk about that why that why that's a temptation to jesus because uh well uh well, you know it's it's a uh it's it's it, it, it uh well jesus says it uh well to, to peter as well he says get behind me satan so we have him saying almost the same exact Thing and and because it denotes the same temptation, the temptation is to gain the crown, the crown of the world without the cross. That's the temptation to gain the crown without the cross. And um, Jesus knows that he has to go to the cross. Uh, that would be tempting to uh, give up that activity if it were you if it were me i would be definitely uh, tempted of course jesus is god and he's not going to sin so but let's talk about the resistance and our lord shows us uh that we must resist he shows us that we must take up the word of god he shows us that there's a fight here now that's you know we're we are in uh the americans wake up and need to wake up because we are in a battle, but all we want are ple our pleasures. We became consumers. Uh, you know, it's it's it, all we all we care about are pleasures. For those there in the last days, they will be lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. But here's the deal: it's uh, it's it's a fight for your life. That's why I call this the resistance. This is base camp here. This episode's called The Resistance. So what do we need to do? See, the devil is roaring around, uh, roaming around, looking for somebody to, to, to devour. He's looking for somebody to kill. He's looking to steal. To st steal the word from you. Steal your joy. Steal, your ha steal everything you have. Kill you. Uh, you know, uh, destroy you. And uh, so in this episode, we are going to learn how to resist the devil as the Bible says, and he will flee. So the scripture says, and the word of God says, therefore submit to God, resist the devil. So first you have to submit to God, and then you may resist the devil. Uh, resist the devil, sorry. So resistance, uh, if you look up the word resistance, it really means the refusal to accept or comply with 
or capitulate with, whatever words you like, the opposition, you are unwilling to yield. You're unwilling to yield to the temptation the devil's offering you. You're unwilling to go down that road. That takes some inner strength, doesn't it? Because the temptations, well, they wouldn't uh, be temptation if they didn't look good. It sure looks good, and it sure is appetizing, and it sure does appeal to our flesh. So, but we are to we are to submit to God. So that's going to take a lot of um, of uh, not only consideration but a lot of training. Uh, I had heard once we get the inner struggle. I heard this on the radio, and I thought it was great. I don't know who it was that said this, but once we get the inner struggle, when we become mature there, the outer struggles are, it's much easier. As we're walking as, a, you know, Christian, once we become a, a Christian, especially a new Christian, is is vulnerable to a lot of attack. Uh, not that we all are, because the Bible says that we, if we're not careful, we ourselves could fall, and there, there are certain ways to get there. So, um so the resistance is the refusal. I refuse to accept that. And to submit, I'm going to submit to God, even if it feels better over here for a minute. But if I can submit to God, and if I resist the devil, the Bible says he will flee. We are the, res that's the resistance. That's what we as Christians are called to do. We're called to walk in accordance to his word. We're called to walk in obedience to him. Well, Randy sounds so legalistic. Listen. I'm not being legalistic. If we don't, Jesus says, why do you call me Lord when you don't obey me? Obedience, that's what the Satan wants to take away is your obedience. So to be, uh, uh, here's another scripture, to be angry. Here's some uh, practical application. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. You hear that? So you can be angry, but you don't have to act out in that anger. You can be angry, and anger is justifiable. Uh, anger is a real feeling. How do you manage it? Well, you don't sin. You you don't let your anger go. You don't resolve the issue, and do it because otherwise you give a foothold. See, the devil wants a foothold in your life. You see, just a little. That's all you got to give him is a little. And military forces, that's all they're looking for is, a, is somehow to break, breach the wall. You know, they would fortify cities, uh, many cities fortified with a wall. Uh, and they came up with many tactics, with, you know, with the, with the ladder, <laughs> just bringing a ladder, you know, many soldiers with a ladder. We need to breach the wall. We need to get in. Uh, an, another example, that would be the Greek Trojan horse. What a great example of how Satan might get into our walls is offering such a pleasant gift but inside uh, if you know the story about the trojan horse inside are soldiers to kill once they get inside see once they've got a foothold then they can overtake you know in battle we don't want we, we want to keep our lines we want to keep the lines why we start breaking the lines that's called uh broken arrow that's called we got a problem uh, we got a problem here. We got our line. We're mixed in. We don't know who's who. It's hard to fight a battle that way. So let's not break our line. Let's stay in the ranks. <laughs> this is the resistance, man. This is serious. I know I goof around a lot. I'm a goofy dude, but really, to be honest with you, this is very serious. So um, get behind me. Satan denotes the same temptation. We talked about that as to gain the crown without the that's that's the temptation so that's that's what's going on there satan's offering i'll give you back the world that you gave me i mean but you got to worship me and if you do that you don't have to go to the cross great deal right great deal sounds pretty good to me uh but jesus says get behind me satan and he knows better obviously so he's teaching us also a lesson so <clears throat> we are to, we're called to put on the whole armor of god that we might stand against the wiles of the devil. He's a wily guy. Some of you remember, uh, you know, I'm I'm getting old, but uh, those cartoons are getting old. But Wile E. Coyote, super genius. He was a super genius, so he thought, and he was wily. He was wily, wily, wily. 
And uh, we don't use that word much. The Bible talks about the wiles. But uh, if you look up the Greek, it, the Greek word for wiles is methodia. And you can see in there the word method. And so uh, basically, but the method is cunning. It's crafty. It's uh, it's cunning. It's the it's a cunning arts. There's an art to it. And it's trickery. It's almost like uh, three card Monty, for example. See three card Monty. If you ever go down to New Orleans, you play three card Monty. They have it all over the street. You know, with the shell. It's a shell game, but it's a trick because there's a crowd around that. You'll never win at three card Monty. You might win the first couple rounds, but the basically all those all those people around at the table are all mules or they're all uh, I can't remember what the other word is but they're all part of the game it's all a game it's all a wily wily game to get game to get your money and they they entice a lot of people with three card Monty I wrote a song about it in fact uh, that's why I know a little bit about it anyways so the method uh, the wiles, uh, the methodia, uh, is the cunning arts or trickery. So, and Jesus says, uh, the Bible says to be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Basically, he's seeking to eat you up. He is, he's looking for somebody, a drunk, a, you know, somebody that's not paying attention. Christian, wake up. This isn't about life and uh, yeah life is great there's adventure in life there's beauty in life there's uh lots of great things blessings in life but there's a devil there's a devil and he's not in the uh the lake of fire yet we are here on earth and he is roaming around looking to devour you and me so uh, this is the resistance i'm on base camp let's get let's get real with our walk with the lord and the only way you're going to do that is grab his sword. The Bible says the sword is the the sword is the word of God. The only way you're going to fight off the devil is by his word and resistance. You have to resist this. this that's why it's called a struggle, right? It wouldn't be a struggle without some resistance. The resistance, we have military resistance. We have people opposing uh, the the adversary. So resist. You got to resist. So we have to resist temptation. In Proverbs, if sinners entice you, do not consent. So you have people that are going to entice you, enticing you to sin. Uh, do not enter the path of the wicked. Uh, that came to mind that wide is the gate and narrow is the way. So the path of the wicked is wide. Don't enter into that path. It's tempting to go down that path. They look like they're having a ball at the bar. They look like they're just having a bar, a ball, going home, sleeping with each other. They're having, I'm missing out. You know, I play music for a living. I see it all the time. And it seems like they're having fun and all that stuff. But I sure remember what uh, what it was, what kind of, I love, I live that life. So I, I know that it's not. It's all like three card money. It's all a game. Uh, you know, you just you just destroy your life with alcohol and drugs and uh, sex. Uh, with the sex gets even further, and that's a different subject. But I mean, uh, it's spiritual. Uh, it, it goes deep. You're not just having sex with someone and going home and uh, you know taking care of some physical need. You are bonding with that person physically, mentally. And spiritually, so you know there there are consequences to our actions, and uh, I mean your parents should have taught you right. So uh, and don't walk in the way of evil. So don't en enter the path of the wicked, and don't walk in the way of evil. You don't follow them, okay? Do not uh, do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness. Present yourselves to God. Well, there you go. Sexual immorality. Don't present your members to an instrument. It's unrighteousness. Uh, Americans, that's, I can't, we're like the freaks, man. Sexual immorality, sex before marriage, Christians, Christians. I'm talking to Christians. I'm not talking, I'm not talking about you worldly people. You worldly people don't know the Lord. Here, I'm giving you some information. 
that you can ponder and think about. But, uh, and you know, you know it's wrong. Uh, sexual morality is wrong. You will not, you will not win that. You're not going to win the game. You're not going to win. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. So re resist temptation. And here are some examples of people who resisted temptation. Uh, just a few. Abraham resisted the king's reward. Um, Elijah himself refused to be paid for healing. They wanted to pay him. You know. Job rejects evil counsel. His buddies come to him and, and basically give him evil counsel. You must be something wrong with you, Job, to be going through all this stuff. They uh, they seem to be righteous. They're his buddies. It's very tempting. He rejects it. The resistance is on. He knows better. He knows the word of God. He's a righteous man. Daniel refuses the wine. I mean, it may not seem like a big deal. Nah, I don't want your wine, king. But, you know, in the light of circumstances... Maybe a glass of wine or two would be pretty good right now. I need a drink. People are always in the movies. You see all this in the movies. They're drinking the alcohol, the sexual immorality. They're just as rampant, man. It just is an influence to you. It's just don't walk in that way. So you got you might have to stop watching that stuff. Because it make the, the, the world is making it seem like it's okay and it's normal. It's normal, but it's not okay. It's normal. That's the way the sinner walks. Yeah, that's normal. This is how they walk, but it isn't okay, and it, it's going to lead you to death. Listen, sin equals death. I can't make it any more plain. The Bible made it that way. I didn't come up with this. The wages of sin is death. It is to why we're dying, and the whole earth is dying. Um, Daniel refuses the wine. Christ refuses worldly honor. He could add the world. I give the world. All you do is bow down and worship me. How hard is that? No. I got to go to the cross. This is what I got to do. Boy, praise the Lord. Went to the cross for you and me. Otherwise, we would be, uh, yeah, we'd be in big trouble. So, um, Peter himself refuses a bribe. And, uh, Christian, we have a duty to resist. This is your duty. This is called, uh, like we talked about, um, John uh, living a life. Uh, fruits of repentance. We are called to repentance. We are called to walk a life of repentance. That's going to involve. That's going to involve you resisting the devil. Period. Okay. This is the resistance. We're at base camp here at Randy's RV Bible study. Base camp. Let's let's get your get your groove up. Get base camp. Find your base camp and get get this in your down deep. Get it in uh, does uh, yeah, so easy to fall. I think I had that scripture uh, noted, but uh, you know, lest you fall, uh, you don't want to. We all, you know, uh, resist the devil. I thought I wrote that down, but okay. Well, we could fall, so uh, I'm sure I did somewhere. But listen, you could fall. So even as a walking, talking Christian, been walking with the Lord, it's temptation is real. Otherwise, you wouldn't have to resist. It just wouldn't be a temptation. You know. This makes sense, right? Uh, temptation. Okay, here are some snares for temptation. And by the way, it's a snare. It's a trap. Don't forget what a trap. You step in the trap. Then what? You ever see a bear trap? They get in those traps, man. They got to eat their leg off. It's a trap. It, the food looks good. They go for it. Bam, boom. The lure for the fish, fish, it's all a trap. It's all a snare. The same thing with temptation. This is the word. This is what the Bible is trying to teach us. False gods are a trap. This is a snare. Sinful covenants, uh, silver and gold, money, riches, evil associations. You're not supposed to be around evil people. We're supposed to present the word to them and love them, but we're not supposed to associate with them. Idolatry. Uh, sorry, guys. Codependency. Uh, sorry, guys. Sorry, like the Canadians say. Idolatry. Uh, sleeping around. I'm sorry. Sex is your God. You know, Whatever your God is. Broken vows, friendships with violent people, scoffing and avari. And I didn't even look that up. I don't even know what that is. Maybe I can get that. So here was some, what are some other snares? We have, we have, uh, how is that done? Uh, we have enticers. I'm going to look up the word avari. I had no idea what that is. Maybe somebody else knows. Looks like, a, um, what is avari? No, our idea. Uh, 
Avari. Hmm. Damage or deterioration. Okay, you guess right. Well, I don't know what that means, but the original Babylonian one. Oh. That was in there. <laughs> I, don't, I shouldn't even put it in there because I don't know what it means. Anyways, we have uh, snares. We have enticers. That's that's the snares. We have seducers. You know, Delilah was a seducer. And she's hot, man. I can imagine Delilah was hot. And Samson had an issue. He would not. He would not. Samson's a good example. He would not submit to God. That part of him. He's a handsome man. Strong. He lived below his potentials. He's like a superhero. He, you know, and he, he just liked women. And he had a problem with his eyes. And he was very codependent. And he wanted, he wanted the Philistine women. He couldn't like, what, like even his parents. What's wrong with your, with the Hebrew women? And then, you know, he had uh, reign over his parents too. He told his dad to go get him a Philistine woman. Well, his dad should have stood his ground and said, no, I won't do that. Here's the father and during that time would choose your bride. So, you know, why the Philistine women? I guess they look better. I mean, you know, maybe chicks in sackcloth sack, sack don't look good. I don't know. I'm just saying he didn't like the women in his area. I don't know. But, I mean, women are beautiful. I don't know what his issue was. But, you know, they were adorned differently. They were showing their stuff, I'm sure, like women do today. And, uh, you know, not dressing to their face. But, you know, they... That's a, it's a trap, man. Men, it's a trap. It's a trap. You want to find somebody toxic? Go right there. Uh, another con. That's another story. Evil companions. Those are snares. Um, so basically, let's get down to this, and I want to make this as quick as I can. I try to do these under thirty minutes. So, so much to talk about. The Lord is good. Who is your master? Basically, it boils down to that. Who is the master? Of you are you? Who is the master? He's God. That's why you need to submit. You have to. You have to submit to God in order to resist the devil. It's the only way. Otherwise, you're just like everybody else. Don't you say everybody's doing the same thing, right? You just want to be like everybody else, I guess. But you think you're not. You think there's something special in your life. You know. You think uh, you know your bottle of whiskey is good. Your your big pot that you got is awesome. Uh, just just your whole life is wrapped up in. And, and relationships, I got me a new man, I got me a new chick, I got this chick, I got uh, no substance, uh, you know, she's hot, I guess she's just hot sexually, I, you know, uh, women, you, 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 women are beautiful, we know that, even other women say women are beautiful, so we know women are, are beautiful, and uh, men are enticed by the seducers, and uh, so who is your master's? To those who live according to the flesh, they have their minds set on fleshly desires. But those who live according to the Spirit, they have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. And there it is, y'all. You know, I'm not perfect in this. And I'm goofy and I don't even want to edit these things. You know, you see I make mistakes in teaching even. But I want to let you know. Uh, that's the question. The challenge is, uh, first of all, who's your master? Okay. If you're not in, you're not in. So don't worry about the video. If you're in, this interests you, being walking, being a Christian, how to do it, how to walk it, how to live it, how to be a disciple of the Lord. Well, here, here's, this is discipleship one-on-one. This is it. This is the resistance, y'all. You have to resist. And it's a daily resistance. It's every day. When your eyes open, you got to find God's truth, you got to get it inside of you. You have to say, this is what I'm living. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing. And you have to resist the devil. You have to resist. He's coming. He's coming today. I hope you know how to do that. If you don't, I want to help you. This message should help you, uh, you know, make some comments. Let's get resisting. Let's help each other out. Uh, we need to resist the devil. The Bible says he will flee if we submit to God and resist the devil. He flees. He fled from the Lord. He didn't have place in the Lord's life. Um, he's pretty stupid. But, you know, how malignant of a narcissist are you, Satan? You know, to think that you're going to rule and reign over Jesus Christ. Listen, I love you. Jesus loves you. He wants to be the Lord and master. He wants to be Lord of your heart, Lord of your mind. And uh, he wants He wants to be, he wants to have you in heaven. And I want you there too. 
So God bless y'all. This is Randy's RV, Base Camp, Bible Study. The resistance is on. See ya.